And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell and welcome back to our continuing coverage of all things X-Men United. And today we're taking a look at the blue team. So there is the gold team and the blue team way back in the 90s. Marvel decided to have the X-Men on different teams. They still do that many times now. Um, so today we're talking about the blue team, which comes with my favorite villain from the comic books, Mr. Sinister, Gambit and Rogue, whose love story, well, took like 30 years to get going, Psylocke, who's, um, I don't know, has psionic knives, Jubilee, so some X-Men, a good villain, and the gold versus blue team method, which is a new way to play the game. Let's see what's in the box. Okay, so let's take a look here at what's in this box. So first we have the villain, Mr. Sinister. Mr. Sinister gives players these gene tokens. He's trying to collect them. When you lose your gene tokens, you lose your special abilities, which means Mr. Sinister is quite effective against the X-Men. And his threat cards do very similar things. He's a fairly straightforward one to play. If you're teaching someone how to play the game for the first time, Mr. Sinister is not a bad one to do that with. You have Rogue, who copies other people's abilities. Gambit, who can throw tokens at people for uh, various amounts of damage. Jubilee, who is, well, she is Jubilee, has some powerful attacks. Psylocke can stun the opponent. And Banshee here, he can hit on adjacent locations or also stun the opponent. So these are the characters in here. Some of them I like a lot, some are okay. You'll have to see where they show up on the rankings. But thematically, I really like this team. I've always enjoyed all five of these. Well, Psylocke's okay, but the other four characters are fantastic. There's also some locations that are included in this set. We have a couple negative locations, Madripoor and Mojoverse. Mojoverse is a weird one to put in here because this card is associated with Mojo, who's in the stretch goal box. And I thought it was odd they didn't put that in that box. But these are both kind of negative things here. Although this one here is, if you do three or more actions here, you can get a wild token. If you did not, you must discard a card of your hand. So it's like TV ratings, I suppose. And here you draw a card, then you discard a card. So these aren't, I guess I said these are negative. These are more of neutral, I suppose. The Savage Land here, where you discard a card from your hand to get a token. That might be worth it. And discard a card from your hand or discard an action card to look at the top card, the Master Plan deck, and you can put it on the bottom. That can come in really handy with a lot of different Master Plans. All right, blue, gold versus, uh, blue team versus gold team. So you take your characters and you split. You're going to have two or three. This is a one versus one player game, or team versus team game anyway. And you're going to play with the cards on separate timelines. So the way this works is each team is going to get a set of missions that are different than the main missions. You don't use the main missions. Here you have five thugs, five civilians, and two threats. These are easier to do. And each one of these comes with a token on it. So if I clear two threats, for example, my team does, I do, I'm going to put this token here, and now the villain's going to attack every two turns, both players. And the, maybe the blue team will get around to doing that. But if I get the second mission done, I can now damage the villain. The villain's under pressure, and I can attack them. But the other team can't until they put one here. So there's a, a lot of rules changes to this. You're going to have two timelines. So let's say... Uh, Rogue and Psylocke on our team, they're going to play their cards in, a, in one timeline. And then the other players, let's say it's Jubilee and Gambit, will be playing their cards in another timeline. And then the villain will play a card. And their card affects both timelines. You can also attack each other in this game. You cannot kill anybody. You can't make them discard their last card. But you can hurt other players, although I found that you usually do that as kind of something you do with extra damage. You're not necessarily going in a way to attack each other because every round turn's going to go back and forth. This also might affect who the villain goes after. But once you can damage the villain, every time you damage him, you put the damage here. The villain's going to act as a level 4 if there's four heroes villain. And once you, the villains defeat it, whoever has more damage on their side, well, that, folks, that team is the winner. Although it is possible for the villain to also win. The rules give explanations for different villains. Talk about some villains that can't be played with this, usually like the special ones, Apocalypse, the Sinister Six, and so on. Shows how you fit challenges in. Shows that a supervillain mode is. I guess that makes it a three-player game at that point. Um, 
It talks about how making the villain harder if you want to, because the villain's going to be slightly easier usually. And then there's a lot of rules you can see for this. But once, if you know how to play the base game, this will change it up a bit. But I found it to be fairly straightforward. And that's what's in this box. So there you go, the gold team. I like them better for their heroes, but the blue team, I do like Mr. Sinister, who incidentally, I think is harder in the yellow and gold team, uh, yellow versus blue team, to, than he is just playing by himself against the heroes. I like these heroes though. I mean, uh, Jubilee and uh, Rogan Gambit are some of my favorite characters, sorry Psylocke, and, and Mr. Sinister. But I'll tell you what, this blue versus gold team thing worked much better than I thought it would. I wasn't expecting it to be as interesting. It gives you this, this combat. You are trying to solve things. There's ways to affect each other. Obviously you can punch each other. But usually you don't want to waste punches on your opponent when you can hit enemies, but finishing missions before the other person, doing things so that the villain attacks them rather than you, it's sneaky, it's definitely in-your-face style of playing, and I wouldn't want to play it all the time, but once in a while, it's not a bad change of pace. It's probably my favorite mode outside the actual regular game, other than playing something like, you know, Sinister Six or um, against you know, the Sentinels or something like that. But these are fun, and of course, both the blue team and the gold team are both very popular X-Men, and they definitely kind of split them up so that you have to get both if you want to have the full X-Men experience. Uh, but both boxes provide you all the stuff, and you don't need to play with these characters. I could say I'm going to have, you know, Avengers versus X-Men. You can do stuff like that if you want to um, as you throw everything in the mix. So there you go. That's X-Men Blue Team. I'm Tom Vassell. We'll see you next time. Dice Tower Judgment, excellent!